So obviously the running world is kind of shocked by Kelvin Kiptum's passing. You know, 24 years old and just a absolute beast in the marathon. His, his fastest time was two hours and 35 seconds. Everybody was confident that this, this guy was going to just break the two hour mark. You know, when you look at the time that he ran for his world record, you're talking four minutes and 35 seconds. 436 was his average pace for the mile, which is like a two minute and 52 second kilometer. Um, he, he was running, you know, to, to do a, a two hour marathon, you're running 13 point oh five miles per hour for 26 miles which is just insane like go out and try and run that pace you're gonna you're gonna feel it um and then when you really think about just what that means at like a, a simple level that some people can relate to is like go to your local track and run around the track one time and time yourself because he was doing that in a minute and eight to a minute and nine seconds on average for 26 miles and if you do the math right four laps is a mile times 26 you're looking at what eight times or um four times 20 is going to put you at 80 and then you've got four times six is 24 so for 104 laps this guy was averaging a minute and eight to a minute and nine seconds now there's other elite marathoners that are pretty close to that but consider that one second per mile is going to add 26 seconds to your marathon. So, you know, a 438 mile is going to put you almost a minute slower. And that's just, it's just insane. So you sit there and you think about this and obviously that his death is going to, is going to spread pretty quickly around the globe, not just with runners, but with people that are maybe looking at the Olympics or other stuff or just in conversation. And to try and put that in perspective for people, I think is important because you look at these elite runners and, and you see, oh, they did a marathon in two hours. It's like, what does that really mean? Well, I think dropping it to the quarter mile, the one lap around the track is an easy way to understand the level of these elite marathoners. And, you know, my fastest mile ever is a 442. And I'm trying to get back down to somewhere around a 440. I'd love to be able to run a 430. But those times are passing. You know, the ability to run that fast for me is going to fade. I'm 34 years old. And just finding the time to train, finding the the energy to train at harder distances, longer distances kind of stuff, um, harder paces, longer distances, you start to look at like what it's going to take to get there. And it's a lot. This guy was putting in so many hours and miles of running every week. And it's just incredible to see what these guys can do. And he was 10 years younger than me. And I think, you know, wow, what if all I have is 10 years left, you know, on the planet, in life, whatever, what am I going to do? What am I doing? And for me right now with running, like one of the most important things is I want to see how many people I can help get as fast as they can possibly get. You know, right now I've got somewhere around an 18 minute 5k. I'm going to be back down to the low 17s on my way to the 16s for sure by the end of this year. And I've done coaching for a while, but I've never like reached out to the online world and tried to offer out a, a, a credible, effective coaching program. And so that's what I'm doing with the PR collective is, is to try and reach out to as many people as possible and help them getting to running. And you don't have to start with some sort of crazy running ability. You look at, you know, what these guys can do. You don't have to start like that. You can start with a freaking jog walk. You get into it and you just get going. And I hope that one thing that comes out of just the international news and the news in general covering this story and, and things like that is just running in general. Like it is one of the best ways to get exercise. Um, the whole myth about like the injuries that come from running and, and like obviously there's some situations where yes you, you could have some injuries if you're overdoing it any any overexertion is going to be bad but if you look at like the benefits of running what it does for your for your body for your legs for your muscles um that whole the whole thing about how it causes knee damage and stuff is has been pushed back pretty hard on now um, in fact it seems that realistically running and walking and exercise actually strengthens your knees and builds up the bones and all of that. It's just the overdoing that really causes injury. 
So getting into a jog walk, getting into a, you know, a couch to 5k kind of training plan, getting on a regular running, walking schedule is really good for basically everyone. You know, if you've got some sort of medical issue, maybe go see a doctor, but like realistically, you can get out and get some exercise and it's going to do a lot of good for you. And you know, the world is stressful. There's lots of stuff going on. There's complications in life. There's financial difficulties. There's emotional difficulties. There's relational difficulties. And when you start to look at like all of that, running is a really great outlet. Exercise in general is a great outlet, but running is one of the most easily accessible outlets. And you don't have to go out and get the most expensive shoes. You can. You see the videos where everybody's like, oh, running's a cheap, you know, entry level thing. And then they show like the little clips or whatever of like $150 shoes, $400 watch, running outfits, whatever. Like you, you can spend a ton of money on running for sure, but you don't need to. Like the shoes that I'm running in right now, I'm going to put over 2,000 miles on. And I got them for 100 to 120 bucks. Got them on sale. They're Adidas, Ultra Boost, PBs. Very comfortable, great shoe. Absolutely love them. But I'm going to clear 2,000 miles on those shoes unless like I somehow really damage them. And the running industry tells you not to do more than 250 to 350 miles. But as long as you're not getting injured and you're not experiencing any sort of problems or whatever, and the shoes aren't, you know, falling apart, you can keep running in them. Um, you know, do your research if you want, if you're concerned about something. But I've found over the years that I can just keep running in the shoes. And there's certainly worse shoes that you could run in. So it doesn't have to be super expensive. Now I do have the Apple Watch Ultra. I absolutely love this watch. It's been one of my favorites to run with, but like you could get, you know, an Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, the GPS is already still pretty good. The battery life was the issue for me. And then if you wanna go cheaper than that, go for a Garmin. You know, a Garmin watch is a great running watch. You're gonna get longer battery life. You're gonna get really good accuracy. Do your research on the modern models because they've got some new ones out there. But, um, it doesn't have to be a ton of money and understand that any money that you do spend is an investment in your own health and fitness journey. And that's really not a bad investment anyway. Like to spend the money to get into running, um, however much you spend, if it changes your lifestyle and motivates you to be healthier and, and that's going to give you more energy and functions as a stress relief and also help build immunity and other things in your life, like that's not a bad thing. And one thing that I love about running is I'm doing it with my kids. You know, I've got, I've got my daughter doing a jog walk. Look, there's somebody running right there. You're going to see him on the side, maybe through the window. Out there just doing his thing, having a good time. That's another thing. It's like the time you spend running can be time spent in any way you really like. Like if you just want to go off by yourself and think, you can do that. If you want to go explore the world, you can do that. You want to listen to some music and jam out and have some fun, you could do that. You want to listen to some music and relax, you could do that. You want to listen to a podcast and get some some mental stimulation and thoughts or whatever. You could do that. You could listen to the news. You could listen to a book. Like, start opening up your mind to what you can do while you're running. And I promise you, the running will be less of a negative if if you even view it that way. Because that's what some people do. They're like, ah, it's such a you know, going out and running. Like, switch it up. You're not going out and running. You're going out and listening to your book. You just happen to be running while you're doing it. You know, you're going out and listening to some music and just having some fun while you're doing it. Like there is so much there and you're going to come away with a healthier version of yourself. So I can't, I can't say it enough. You know, running is an amazing opportunity to improve your health and so many other areas of your life. I'm going to keep talking about it, but if you're someone that wants to get into running or get serious about running, go check out the links in my bio. I, I mean, it's, it's the roadmap to running.com, but also it's just going to give you like access to the books and everything. And I'm starting a running community to try and build something really special around what running for all age levels and abilities from a zero jog walk all the way to someone who's trying to break their new PR of getting under 17 minutes. Um, I do base space training because that's what I found to be most effective and most uh, easy to customize for everyone. So it, it allows me to reach out and help people at every different level using a structured plan that people can all be doing together. So I love that. But that's that's all I got, man. It's just some thinking I'm having while I'm driving home about just all the stuff going on in the running world.